Hello. Today we're the third part about trusting God for your help. Not food. Not food. All right. Thank you for landing on my channel for the best teachings on divine health and divine healing. Hit that subscribe button, click that old bell, and you will be notified when I post new content every single Wednesday, every single week. Hey, I am Tony Myers. I was healed up from Lou Gehrig's disease. My testimony is featured on the 700 Club. I've written five books on divine healing, and I've guided thousands to be able to recognize they're heal healed. You, with just a few changes in your perception, you can be next. Okay, so let me ask you a couple of questions and answer them honestly. Be honest with yourself. What is the determining factor of whether you are healthy or not? Now be honest and I will bet that you just answered your diet if you eat healthy, if you eat the right foods and exercise. You put that number one. So who are you or what are you trusting for your health? Yourself and your diet. What's that called? Self-effort. Here's another question. On a regular basis, do you eat foods you like? Yes or no? What do you base your diet off of? And most of you will say that you eat healthy and you don't necessarily love the food. That's why we splurge, right? That's why, hey, we're going to break away from our diet today and we're going to enjoy ourselves with some pizza. So, what do you hold accountable for your health, your diet? You think if you eat the right foods, you will stay healthy, even though you know that isn't the case because there's many people that eat healthy that are in hospitals as those that don't eat right. Come on, you know you know I'm speaking truth. We're in search for the perfect diet. We're in search for the perfect food. Uh, we use diet. We use um, vegetable drinks and all this. We are looking for a physical substance to control our health. So who are we not trusting? We're not trusting God. We are not trusting the Holy Spirit. Sorry, but that's the truth. In the same breath, because depending who you talk to, it'll be well, I trust God, but then I eat healthy because God wants us to eat healthy. Whose definition 
of what is healthy are you using? Man's definition. And then this is where we get in this big thing. Well, God sees uh, the diet of Israel as the best diet. Well, God sees this as the best diet. God sees that. And so my book, Knocking Food Off His Pedestal, totally demolishes all that stuff. God wants us to trust in him for our health. In scriptures, food has zero. It never says, eat this and you will stay healthy. It is trust in the Lord and you will have a long life. Even Jesus made the statement, it's not what you put into your body, but what comes out that defiles the man. So today we're going to look at the Daniel fast. And I'm going to show you the reason Daniel was healthy, the whole reason, and we call it the Daniel fast, but that's really actually wrong. So let's take a clear look at the Daniel fast, which Christians adapt. And, but once again, we're looking at it for the wrong reasons. Why do people go on the Daniel fast? I would tell you why, because they're told Eat only vegetables and you will be healthy. You're purging your body from blah, 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 blah by doing the Daniel fast. How many people have I, how many people have I heard say, well, the Lord told me I need to go on the Daniel fast to purge my body and to eat only good foods. Or the Lord used the Daniel fast for the food so that I would be healed. That, number one, isn't what the Daniel fast was about. And number two, the idea is to trust God, not the food you put in your mouth. Let's take a look at this. We're in Daniel chapter 1, verse 8. Well, actually, let's go. Here we go. All right, we'll start at 4. Select only strong, healthy, and good-looking young men. And that's the king. Make sure they are well-versed in every branch of learning, are gifted with knowledge and good judgment, and are suited to serve in the royal palace. Train these young men in the language and literature of Babylon. The king assigned them a daily ration of food and wine from his own kitchens. They were to be trained for three years and then would enter the royal service. Okay, let's look at this. So, from the captives, the king of Babylon wanted only good-looking young men because they were to be serving royalty. 
They were to enter royal service. He was concerned. He wanted them healthy. He wanted them young, strong, smart, intelligent, all that. The full package. He was feeding them from his kitchen. The very finest, the very healthiest foods to keep them strong and healthy. Remember now, the king had all the top intelligence people and this is the diet that's best. But Daniel was determined not to defile himself by eating the food and wine given to them by the king. And the reason for that was because it was food that was offered to was was offered to idols, okay? That is exactly why. And plus, I'm sure there were some meats there that that were not were not clean foods by the children of Israel's definition. Okay? So Daniel wanted not to defile himself. That was the reason. So then he asked the chief of staff for permission not to eat these unacceptable food. Now God had given the chief of staff both respect and affection for Daniel. But, I'm, but he responded, I am afraid of my lord the king who has ordered you eat this food and wine. If you become pale and thin compared to the other youths your age, I am afraid the king will have my head. See, the king had them on the best diet. The healthiest diet. In, in the Babylonian culture, He had these young men on the best of foods that would keep them healthy. Daniel spoke with the attendant who had been appointed by the chief of staff to look after Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Ezra. Here we go. Please test us for 10 days on a diet of vegetables and water, Daniel said. At the end of the ten days, see how we look compared to the other young men who are eating the king's food. Then make your decision in light of what you see. The attendant agreed to Daniel's suggestion and tested them for ten days. Okay, number one, look at this. This was to be Daniel's diet for the rest of his life, for starters. Okay, he wasn't going on a 10-day fast to prove to God. It was reverse. He asked the chief attendant to test him. Why? Because he believed God would keep him healthy. He wasn't believing in the food. He wasn't saying, look, this food will keep me at No, he was saying, my God will keep me healthy and strong. We have turned into this food. We need to go on the Daniel fast 
and purge our body of all the bad stuff we've eaten and replace it with the good stuff so then we'll be healed. Nonsense! We are taking the whole idea of the Daniel fast way out of context. Daniel had faith in God. He wasn't putting his faith in the diet. And this was a diet he was going to maintain for his whole life. He wasn't just fasting for 10 days. He was on that diet so that he would not defile himself. And he was going to prove that God would keep him healthy. And that's what it was about. This was a lifelong diet. The 10 days comes in because he had to prove to the chief of staff that he would continue to look as healthy, if not healthier, than everyone else that was on the king's diet. At the end of 10 days, and these, the king's experts would say that was impossible. At the end of 10 days, Daniel and his three friends looked healthier and better nourished than the young men who had been eating the food assigned by the king. So after that, the attendant fed them only vegetables instead of the food and wine provided by the others, but provided for the others. That was from then on. Okay. When you do the Daniel fast, you do it for 10 or 21 days. These are the times where you eat healthier. So you purge yourself of all the bad foods. Come on now. Most people are not fasting to rely on God. The 10 days was a testing period. Daniel was going to prove that God would sustain him and make him healthier. And that's exactly what happened. So number one, Daniel wasn't fasting to get healed. He was fasting so he wouldn't defile himself by eating food that was offered to idols. Daniel and the other three. The rest of the captives were fine with with eating the king's food. They were captives. They were prisoners. They didn't look at it that way. So therefore, they were, and that's fine. But Daniel and his friends did not want to defile themselves. Is that why you're fasting? No. You're not fasting. You're not doing the Daniel fast. So you don't have to defile your body through eating food offered to idols. Most people that do the Daniel fast are trying to fast to health. And once again, this was a diet that Daniel was to keep for the rest of his life. As long as he was in Babylon. He 
He was trusting God. We're not. You're trusting what you put in your mouth. You are trusting in what, by denying yourself your favorite foods and you're sacrificing for God. Instead, a fast should be to rely more on the Holy Spirit, to rely, learn how to rely on the Holy Spirit. Big old difference. But when we fast, and it's the same thing, people that go on a, a water-only fast, well, why hear out of their mouths? They're doing it to purge their body. And we're sacrificing for the Lord. The Daniel fast. We're fasting to get healthy. And once again, we're going to fast with what we consider to be the perfect diet. <clears throat> so, once again, at points, you're relying on what you put in your bodies. That's the hardest thing. Believers are told in all directions, you have to eat this to be healthy. You are responsible for keeping your health. If you eat healthy, you'll be healthy, which that's not the truth. And then it comes down, you have to avoid this food, you have to avoid that food. Or... Are you going to get over it and trust the Lord? How many Christians are bound and chained and have a heavy yoke because the temple, our bodies are a temple of the Holy Spirit, so we better treat the temple right. Well, you're treating the temple right according to man. God wants you to trust him that he, just as he makes you righteous, guess what? He's the one that will sustain your health. And this is com coming from someone that went six months with no substance, no food whatsoever, because my stomach was paralyzed. So, is trusting the Holy Spirit, He will sanctify what you put in your body, is quir quit. You quit worrying about what you eat and what you drink. And we talked on the first, very first video. How we are trying through self-effort to maintain our health for us. The whole reason people have problems with dieting is because they put themselves under the, the law of sin and death. And now they're dieting to take care of their temple, to take care of the temple of the Holy Spirit because it's on their shoulders. And guess what? So then sin enters into the picture and you struggle and struggle to keep the diet. 
Amen. All right. Next week, part four, and we will start discussing how to look at food. How to knock it off its pedestal. Be blessed. Be healed. And be a blessing. In the description section, you will find the links to my Amazon author page and to my website. God bless you. Check out next week's teaching where I start to shed some light on this. Thank you.